Okay, so in kinematics, if the velocity was constant, there was only one equation to worry about, and it was this one. Now, if there's an acceleration, things are going to get a bit more involved. So if there's an acceleration when something's moving, and it has to be a constant acceleration, that means it's always the same acceleration. If acceleration is changing, then it's a calculus question. Um, but if there's a constant acceleration, it's an algebra question. But it still makes the math a lot more involved because when there is an acceleration, you go from one kinematics equation to five. So a kinematics question in physics is going to deal with something in motion for a certain time frame. And in that time frame, you're going to have these five variables. And they're denoted with these symbols right here. So the first one, VI, initial velocity. VF, final velocity. And those are the initial and final velocities for the time frame in the question. Delta X is displacement. A is acceleration and delta t is change in time. So there's five quantities, and there's also five equations. So these are very important. They're the kinematics equations. Each of these five equations has four of the quantities in them. So a kinematics question is gonna ask for an unknown quantity, and the question should give at least three of them. And the equations are named with which one is missing. So when you go through a question, you want to find three knowns, one unknown, and get four variables. One of the variables of the five will just not be in the question. And you want to pick one of the five equations using what is not given. So when you go to solve a kinematics question, here's the steps to follow. The first one, read the question, write down the known quantities. Most of them, except time, are vectors, so do watch out for the sign. And also write the unknown quantity, and you should have four quantities. Once you have four quantities that you're working with, there'll be one of the equations that relates those four quantities, so pick that equation and write it down. If the equation is not already solved for what you're looking for, you want to solve it for that variable first using algebra. And then once you do algebra, then you can plug in numbers. All right, here's a sample question. So it's about an object in motion. We're given quantities about the object, and we're asked to find something else about its motion. So a 2019 Hyundai Elantra, uniformly accelerates, so constant acceleration, from 12 meters per second to 20 meters per second in a span of three seconds. What distance did it travel in that time? So the first step is to write down the givens, and the way to do that is just as you read through the question, write down what it's giving to you. So it says accelerates from 12, so that's VI, to 20, that's VF, in three seconds, that's T. So there are three knowns and there does need to be three knowns in order to solve a question. I have three knowns here, which means I can solve this question. It asks what distance does it travel in this time? So the unknown here, because it's traveling only in the positive direction, the distance and displacement are the same. So the unknown is delta x. Now I have four variables, vi, vf, delta t, and delta x. I have five equations. I want to find the equation that has those four variables in it. Okay, so those are the equations. Those are my four, um, well not my four knowns, but the four variables I'm working with. And I have all the variables here except for acceleration, so I want to choose the equation that has no acceleration in it. And that happens to be this first one up here. So I'm going to pick the equation. I'm going to write down the equation that I have. Now the next step here would be to solve for the unknown. In this case, the unknown is delta x. The equation is already solved for delta x, so there's no algebra. The only thing to do is plug in numbers. So that's taking the equation there, 
putting the numbers given to us. So VI is 12, VF is 20, delta T is 3, so it's 12 plus 20 over 2 times 3. Now, this first kinematics equation isn't really a new equation from before. Um, because this thing here, VI plus VF over 2, that's just the average velocity. So this is saying displacement is average velocity times time. So in this case, the average velocity is 16. So the distance traveled here is 48. OK, so here's a couple more example questions on using the kinematics equations. This first one's another simple one. So again, the game plan is to identify the knowns. Hopefully, there's at least three. Identify the unknown variable. And then again, hopefully, you have four variables. Pick one of the five equations that contains those four variables. Solve it for the unknown. Plug in numbers and get the answer. So I'm going to go through and read the question and try to pick out knowns. So a 2014 Hyundai Elantra is initially traveling at 10 meters per second. So it says initially, that makes that the initial velocity. And it didn't define a positive direction. So I'm going to say the direction it's moving in is the positive direction. So initial velocity is plus 10 meters per second. OK, next, it accelerates uniformly at a rate of 2 meters per second. So it accelerates uniformly. Uniformly means the acceleration is always the same. It's constant. And that is required to use these equations up here. So acceleration is positive 2 meters per second squared. And then this happens for 4 seconds. So change in time is 4 seconds. And then it asks how far the car travels. Um, in this case, that does mean distance. But distance and displacement are the same thing. If something always travels in the positive direction, then the displacement and the distance will be the same number. So the unknown here is displacement or delta x. So I do have four variables, so I'm good to go there. VI, initial velocity, A, acceleration, delta T, time, and delta X, displacement. The only variable I don't have as part of the question is no final velocity. So I want to pick an equation out of these five that has all four variables except for no final velocity. Oops. It's this one right here. So I'll go ahead and write it in the problem. And what makes this question easy again is it's already solved for delta x. So there's no algebra. It's just plugging in numbers. So delta x equals vit plus 1 half at squared. Plug in the values here. So delta x, vi is 10. Time is 4 seconds plus 1 half. A is 2. And time is 4 seconds squared. That's 40 plus 16. So the distance traveled here is 56. OK, now I'm going to go to one with actual, actual algebra in it. And that's example C. OK, um, so in this case, there is a 2013 Hyundai Accent traveling at 22 meters per second. OK, there we go. So VI. And again, I'll just say that's the way it's going in initially. That's the positive direction. So VI is plus. 22 meters per second. OK, the brakes can produce a maximum acceleration of 8 meters per second. What is the minimum stopping distance needed for the car? All right, so only got two numbers. The second number is acceleration. And I know two things. It says brakes. It also says it's stopping. That means this acceleration is going this way. The acceleration has to be that way. So if the velocity is positive and it's slowing down, the acceleration has to be negative. So it's negative 8. And the third variable wasn't given with a number, but it did say it right here. It said it stops. That means the final velocity is 0. We have VI. Acceleration. VF is 0. Um, even though the acceleration is negative, it's only going to travel in the positive direction. So I'm solving for displacement again. So I have VI, A, VF, delta x. The variable that's not here is time. 
can come up here and find the equation that doesn't have time in it. And it's this one. OK. So vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. And I want to solve this for the unknown variable, which is delta x. Um, I guess you could plug in numbers right away, but it's good practice to solve for the unknown variable first algebraically and then plug in numbers. So in this case, what do I want to do here? Vf squared minus vi. Subtract vi squared on, from both sides first equals 2a delta x. And then just divide by 2a, and that's the answer, at least algebraically. So delta x is vf squared minus vi squared over two times acceleration. Okay, now it's solved algebraically. That's basically it. The only thing left is to plug in numbers. So vf is zero squared minus vi, which is 22 squared. And then over acceleration, which is two, negative number here, negative eight. And then plug it into a calculator. When you do that, the calculator gives you 30.25 meters. OK. One more. All right. So this one's asking, asking for two things. Hopefully, it gives us three. So a jet requires 2.5 seconds of acceleration. That's variable number one, is time. And it accelerates from rest. So that lets me know what VI is. So if it starts at rest, that means that VI starts at zero. And it's covering a 94 meter distance. So it's going in the positive direction, 94 meters. All right, and there's two questions here. Uh, the first one, what is the takeoff speed of the plane? So for part A, I have four variables, delta t, vi, delta x, and vf. The variable I don't have is acceleration. So go up and find an equation. And it's this one right here. So I want to solve this equation over here for VF. And this becomes easier if you realize that VI is 0. So just kind of get rid of it. So with that, then I have delta X is VF over 2 times delta T. So to solve that, multiply both sides by 2, divide both sides by T, and you get VF is 2 delta x over delta t. So vf is going to be 2. The distance was 94. And the time was 2.5. When you plug in numbers here for vf, you get pretty fast, but it's an airplane, 75.2 meters per second. OK. Um, the last part's a lot simpler. I'm looking for acceleration. And what's cool about this is I have five variables that I'm working with here. As long as there's an equation with acceleration in it, I can solve for acceleration. Now, in my opinion, the easiest equation to work with, if you can work with it, is whoops, this one right here. Vf equals vi plus at. Especially because, in this case, vi is 0. So for this question, the final speed is just acceleration times time. So solving that for acceleration is pretty simple. Just divide by time. So acceleration is final speed over time. And then just plug in numbers. vf was 75.2. And the time was 2.5 seconds.
And when you plug in numbers here, you get right around 30 meters per second.